So Evergreen Custom Cabinets posted on the Mosaic Forum, how can I taper the sides of a hood cabinet like in this picture? And we're going to do that. So I'm going to create a new job. I'm just going to call it Tapered Hood. I'm going to spell tapered correctly because that's more fun. Uh, room, I'm just going to draw a wall, it's arbitrary. Go to my products, get to the front view of the wall. I'm just going to select a wall cabinet to go on here. Uh, I'm going to make it, I like my hoods to be six feet off the floor. So we're going to go 35, no, 33 and a half. I'm going to make the width of it 48, center it in the room. I modify all my bottoms, so I'm just going to uh, reset that all the way. And go to the interior, clear that out. Go to the shape tab. I'm going to make this a finished end. I'm going to make the right end a finished end, and I'm going to make the face of it a finished end as well. Switch this to perspective. So I've got a bunch of stuff going on here that I don't want. I've got a top, I've got a back, I don't want to have the back. I skin all my finish ends normally. Here we don't need to have a skin for it, so I'm going to go through my parameters and change some things. Bottom rail wall, that can go away. I want to keep my nail nailer width at zero. So let's see, ends. Skin finished ends. I'll click that to no. I'm going to go to my tops. Wall top, full top is what it's set at currently. I'm going to switch that to none. Go to backs. Cabinet unfinished backs, all cabs. We're going to switch that to none. And we are going to do boring. Where are you? System holes for the wall. I have that as shotgun bore. I'm going to switch that to none. Okay, so now I have a box. I'm going to make this a little bit deeper. 24 inches is pretty typical for what I do for a uh, hood liner cabinet. Now I'm going to take my existing unfinished ends, my left, right, and the front, <clears throat> and modify those in height. But I want to modify all three of them at once, so I'm going to add some parameters right now. So right now I'm just going to call this apron W for apron width, and we'll just set that at 6 inches. And I also want to set up a variable so I can tilt my sides in and tilt my front back. So I'm going to call this side taper. I'm just going to set it at 5 for right now. I'm going to call this one front taper. And I'm going to set that at 5 as well. Just so the math is easy to start out with. So if I go to my parts, my finished end left, I'm going to edit that part and I'm going to alter its length. So I'm just going to call this apron width. Copy that. Go to my right finished end, same thing, alter my length, apron width, finished end right, which is actually my front, also change the length of that to apron width. So there I've got my base for my tapered hood. So I'm going to add a part. We're going to just call this left L taper for left taper. Part type, I'm going to call it a finished end. Its width is just going to be depth. Our length, so this is where you start getting into some math. Um, I have, I use this website, it's kaizencasio.com. It's just a trig calculator. I use it for cheating all the time to make life easier. So if we have a right triangle here, 
we know that our base is going to be the depth of our cabinet and the height is going, or excuse me, A is going to be the height of our cabinet minus our apron width. And then this is going to be whatever our taper is for front and back, side taper, front taper, whichever one you want to use. And where did my brain go? Length. So this is going to be height minus apron, just to start out with. I'm just going to do that for right now. Oops, apron width. Part 3D position. I'm going to switch this layer to the ends. Let's see. So bottom to top, we're going to go apron width. Left to right, finish end.th is our parameter for the thickness of the finished end. I think it's y. Nope, minus 90. All right, so then I have my side that's going to be tapered. I'm just going to adjust the shape of it right now so I can wrap my head around it. Click this front corner, our Y is going to be front taper. That gives me that. So we're going to go back to our 3D position and figure out what our angle is. So minus 90, we've got a base that we can adjust it from. So our angle is going to be, I'm just going to subtract. It's an arc tangent of the height divided by the length. So a tan divided by the front taper. Divided by height minus paper and wood. So minus 90, which is, we're just using that as our zero, minus arc tan, front taper, divided by height, minus apron width. See what that gives us? Parentheses not matched. Sweet. Yeah, we need one more at the end here. Okay, so that tilted us the wrong way. So we're going to make that a positive. There we go. We've got, we've got our one side. And if you see right here, that's sitting up a little bit. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this back to a negative or subtracting that. So it's tilting out. And I'm going to actually just make this as my right side. So left to right, this is just going to be width. And there you can see where it's coming together nice and tight the way it's supposed to be. So I'm going to rename this part R taper. And that one should be good to go. Except for my length. So length. That's going to be the hypotenuse of that triangle. So it's going to be height minus... Uh, Man, this is hard to think out loud on camera. We need to do the square root of a squared, so height squared, height minus apron, not high, height minus apron width, put that in parentheses, times height minus apron width, Plus, that would be our side taper times side taper. Let's see, it's not matched. That's sweet. Got that. Got that. Uh, do I need one more? 
here. There we go. Okay, so that should be good. I'm going to copy this part, edit it. This one's going to become our left taper. Go back to the part 3D position, left to right. I'm just going to set this at zero. I'm going to cut this and set this at zero. We need to spin this part around. Why didn't it set to zero? There we go. So in Z, spin this around 180. Then our front to back is going to be part width. Should be 90, should be minus 90. So that means I should be able to drop that formula back in there. Yep. But now my, my taper is running incorrectly, so I need to modify the shape of the part. Go to edit shape. This point here needs to be a zero. I'm just going to cut this, set it at zero. Go to this point. Go part with minus our front taper. Boom, boom. So we got two sides. And yeah, we are joint going to zero there. So we need a front. So I'm going to add a part. We're going to call this F taper. length is going to be the width. Call this a finished end again. Part 3D position. I'm going to set this as an ends. Yeah, my XYZ. Width. Um, I'm just going to I'm just going to set this at 12 for a second because I'm going to steal formula out of one of these. I'm going to take my length, because this is kind of a long, drawn-out one to uh, type out. I'm going to copy that. Hit cancel, just in case I did something stupid and modified it. So here on our width. Now I need to alter this to front taper. And front taper. If anybody knows how to square stuff in mosaic so I don't have to do formula times a formula, that would be awesome. I don't know how to do it. So part 3D position. Bottom to top, that's going to be apron width. Maybe front to back. I think I need to spin this part around because this point here is going to be my zero zero on it. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to have the same problem that I had with that left end. So I'm going to cancel out of that quick. So I'm going to spin this around. Now eh, let's just do it this way quick and see what happens. So all the other ones are minus 90. No. So I'm going to close that quick and I'm going to grab the formula that I have for the angle for this. That will have to be altered as well. And so we don't need to work on the right one right now. For 3D position, go back to our angle. So we're going to have to change this front taper to side taper. I don't know if it's going to be plus or minus. It doesn't matter. It's easy to change. Hey, hey, hey. But we still aren't sitting the way we want to. So I'm going to make this plus. 
because of this front corner. When I push that part back into the piece, it's going to be off. So I'm gonna rotate that around. You can see how this front point is right at the top edge of our apron. So I should be able to spin this 180. Yep. And then our left to right is going to be part width. No, part length. There we go. So we got tapered front and sides. So then we need to alter the shape of that. I'm probably doing this wrong. So this is going to be side taper. I'm going to copy that. Select this point. Part length minus side taper. Hey, hey, got lucky. All right, so that gets us our three tapered parts. Let's play with the parameters a little bit that we made early on and make sure that we're, make sure everybody shucks and jives the way we want to. So apron width, I'm gonna adjust the height of the apron. That looks like that worked out swell. Let's leave it there. Side taper, let's make that 12 inches. Nah, see, did something wrong. Parts. Okay, so then we need to adjust the length of our left and right taper. I don't remember what I changed. Side taper should be a 12, so that should have dipped back more. So, oops, not parameters, parts. Let me tweak this angle. Yeah, so this needs to be side taper. So we're gonna have just the length of that front as well. Now I'm confusing myself. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be side taper. using here for the length. Let's just look at the front of this because that'll give us our dimension. Click on that point anywhere else. 33 and a half. So that's good. Back to perspective, go back to our parameters, set our front taper at, well, let's change this to 10. That moves correctly. Let's change this to 12. And that moves correctly. Hooray! So yeah, that's how you make the sides and the front taper and move all parametrically. If it was me and my shop, um, I wouldn't cut those parts on the CNC. I would just use the math so I could cut them out manually. Um, if you want to get real crazy with it, I do not know how to figure out the angle that these go to. I always just guesstimate that and test cut it a few times to get it to work. But that's how it's done. Have a good day.